Blessed is this holy man who was worthy to be numbered among the apostles, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come to celebrate St. Barnabas, as we've just been reminded in that entry antiphon, an extraordinary man of faith, who was therefore willing to give up his own choices, uh, his own way of life, and to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit to live out the vocation which he had been given. We begin this Mass, we recognise that in our baptism, each of us began our own journey of faith. Each of us has our vocation, our calling from God. We recognise that if we are to live out that calling, it is because we recognise that presence of God in our lives and that we rely upon his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the church, the the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and deed. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A great number believed and were converted to the Lord. The church in Jerusalem heard about this and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. There he could see for himself that God had given grace and this pleased him and he urged them all to remain faithful to the Lord with heartfelt devotion for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. And a large number of people were won over to the Lord. Barnabas then left for Troas to look for Saul, and after he'd found him, he brought him to Antioch. And as things turned out, they were to live together in that church for a whole year, instructing a large number of people. It was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. In the church at Antioch, the following were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, Manon, who'd been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. One day, while they were offering worship to the Lord and keeping a fast, the Holy Spirit said, I want Barnabas and Saul set apart for the work to which I've called them. So it was that after fasting and prayer, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. 
ring out your joy. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the sound of music, with the trumpet and the sound of the horn, acclaim the King, the Lord. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go, make disciples of all the nations, says the Lord. I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. Provide yourselves with no gold nor silver, not even with a few coppers for your purse. We no haversack for the journey, or spare tunic, or footwear, or a staff. For the workman deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you go into, Ask for someone trustworthy and stay with him until you leave. As you enter his house, salute it. And if the house deserves it, let your peace descend upon it. If it does not, let your peace come back to you. The Gospel of the Lord. I was watching the other day uh, the live stream from some other churches and as you know if you start sort of clicking on one it leads you to another and before you know where you are and I found myself watching uh, an evangelist in fact from America. He was speaking with great passion. He was appealing for 54 million dollars in order to buy a jet which would take him to the place where the gospel needed to be preached. What struck me about his appeal was he seemed to have convinced himself that this was essential, this would be a good thing, being able to reach out to other places. The opening prayer reminded us it was the call to St Barnabas, without jet, go and convert the nations. And St Barnabas responded extraordinarily faithful, willingly going to, to Antioch, and he exercises his ministry there very faithfully, and then he's called to move on to Tarsus and to look for Paul. Then they go to Antioch, where they minister for a year, and when the word comes that they are needed, they are sent off again. An incredibly active ministry, seeking out those who need to hear God's word. Of course, while I've been saying this about St Barnabas, you may have still been wondering about the tele-evangelist and whether or not he got his jet. The honest answer is I don't know. I think his appeal may have been weakened by the fact that he acknowledged that he already had one. There's perhaps that sense in the gospel of not taking a spare tunic, not perhaps needing a spare jet. The one he currently had, it seems, would not go far enough or fast enough. It's very easy to convince ourselves, perhaps quite sincerely, that we need things. Which brings us to that gospel and the Lord sending out the apostles to undertake the ministry of caring for the sick and of casting out devils and of proclaiming his word. And he tells them clearly, 
Provide yourselves with no silver, no gold, not even a few coppers, no haversack or a spare tunic. They will therefore need to rely not on what they can earn or on what they own. They are to rely on God. They are to have that experience that those who rely on God find that they are not disappointed. And in having that experience, it will actually make them so much better at witnessing to other people about the way in which God hears and answers our needs. It will bring about that proper frame of mind, that spirituality that realises that everything comes from God and that we should focus on him and be confident in him. It led St Barnabas to let go of everything, even his life in this world. In many ways, this confidence in God continues what we heard yesterday. Elijah, absolutely confident that God will hear and answer his prayer, and God does. The celebration of St Barnabas and these readings, incredibly appropriate for this Thursday, the traditional day of prayer for vocations. The first reading ends with that call and response. The Holy Spirit calling, the community praying, the laying on of hands and the sending out on the mission. All of this we will witness and experience over these next weeks with the ordination of Deacon Thomas to the priesthood. We will be that praying community. We will witness as Bishop Richard lays hands on his head. We will be witnesses too to that sending out, that beginning of his ministry. Today we pray that he will be inspired by St Barnabas, as indeed will others, that they will hear that call of the Holy Spirit, that they will let go of the things of this world and that they will give themselves to the Lord. So we pray in thanksgiving for those who have inspired us by their faith, by their way of life, by their letting go and living out their vocation. We begin by praying for Pope Francis and for Bishop Richard that they will continue to inspire us through their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our schools. We give thanks for the teachers, for their vocation, to nurture the children, particularly to help them to grow in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those around the world who suffer persecution and imprisonment. We pray for an end to racism, hate and violence. We pray that the world will know that peace of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who are suffering from COVID-19, for all those who find themselves isolated and housebound. And on this Thursday, we give thanks particularly for the NHFs and other essential care workers that they will know the reward of their labour. Lord, in your mercy, as we prepare to celebrate uh, the ordination to the priest of Deacon Thomas, we pray that he may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit and that others will hear that call of the same Spirit to consider their vocation.
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Nigel Powell, for whom this Mass is offered, and to remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who've asked us to pray for them. And we ask Our Lady to join her prayers with ours as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we bring you our prayer, confident of the love you have shown us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be the lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, 
be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants and all have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, 
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
as we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed Apostle Barnabas may one day behold, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder that there will be evening prayer at six this evening. If you have any intentions to offer, either intentions of need or intentions of thanksgiving, do please send them in. Which reminds me in terms of thanksgiving, and I wish Noel, who I know is watching, a very happy anniversary of his reception into the church. I promise we'll keep you very much in our prayers. Talking about being received into the church, as you know, the government have said that uh, from next Monday uh, there will be the possibility uh, of opening the churches for some period of time for private prayer. May I thank all those who volunteered. We are getting back to you, I promise, as soon as we're a little clearer about what it is uh, that might be happening. Uh, some uh, guidance directives arrived yesterday. Turns out that the whole question is more complicated than it first seems in terms of what we must have in place to be ready. So thank you for your patience. Uh, we will do as much as we can as soon as we can, uh, but there are a lot of ifs built in. If you haven't yet offered and you are able to offer with either stewarding or cleaning during any times so that the churches can be open, then we would be very grateful to hear from you. Finally, just in case anyone is thinking of it, I know how generous this community has been. Um, we don't need a £54 million Gulfstream jet. Um, apart from anything else, I'm not sure where we park it. We've got a very, uh, as you know, a very limited driveway. On the other hand, um, a little helicopter might be nice. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. Father... Son and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.